So today we're going to continue our discussion of atomic structure and periodicity. We're looking at the atomic spectrum of hydrogen and then relating that to the Bohr model. Okay, so let's go over a few terms. So emission spectrum, this occurs when excited electrons give off their excess energy and we see that energy in the form of different colors of light based on the wavelength. Continuous spectrum is where all visible wavelengths are emitted. So a rainbow, a light through a prism, anything like that. Sunlight in general when you look at it with a spectroscope. So line spectrum shows only discrete wavelengths. This would be an emission spectrum because those excited electrons are giving off a certain amount of energy and we're going to see certain wavelengths of light. So because we see this line spectrum, this means that certain energies are allowed. And so we say that that's quantized. So it's very specific wavelengths of light. Think of it like a staircase. You, can, you can't be in the middle of the step. You have to be on one step or the next one. And so that's being quantized. So electron energy levels are also quantized. So, you know, electrons are going to jump these specific levels. So we can find the wavelength given the amount of energy, and this is called Planck's equation. And so the change in energy is equal to h times v, which is equal to, or our frequency, which is equal to h times the speed of light divided by wavelength. So when we're talking about those line spectrum or the emission spectrums, this is what we're talking about. So we've done this lab before where we look, we excite the electrons for a certain element, and then we see these discrete wavelengths of light. And then we can actually use these to identify types of elements, and this is what's also used to identify elements present in stars. You just use really powerful spectroscopes. Okay, so then we took this information and Niels Bohr uh, took this and came up with his model of the atom. And so he led from 1885 to 1962, and basically he looked at how the electron in a hydrogen atom moves around the nucleus only in certain allowed circular orbits. We said that these, you know, in the previous slide, that this energy was quantized, so they had to be these specific circular orbits. And we also, he also talked about how all objects move in a straight line unless there's an application of force. So these electrons are going to want to move in a straight line, but then we have these protons putting this pull on the electrons, keeping them in this orbit. So because they're going in this circle, they have acceleration, because remember acceleration is a change in velocity. Change in velocity is a um, change in the speed or direction. So since they're changing direction, that's accelerating. Particles under acceleration radiate energy. So we've got this circular motion, and so we learn that angular momentum can only occur in certain increments. So there's that quantized part again. And so let's look at Bohr's equation. So from all of these conclusions, he came up with this equation that says the energy is equal to negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times z squared over n squared. Well, z represents the nuclear charge. This is the charge of all the protons in an atom, and it's equal to the atomic number. n represents an integer. So the larger the value of n, the larger the orbit radius. So the larger the value of n, the further away from the nucleus the electron is getting. And we, are, we can use this equation to calculate energy levels. So it's used to calculate the change in energy of an electron when it changes orbits. So let's take a look at an example. So we want to calculate the energy required to excite the hydrogen electron from level n equals 1 to level n equals 2. And then we're going to calculate the wavelength of light that had to be absorbed by the hydrogen atom in its ground state to reach this excited state. So let's look at two parts. Let's calculate the energy first. So we're going to use Bohr's equation. Whoops, what's going on? Okay, so E equals negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times the quantity z goes on top, z squared over n squared. Now, because this is hydrogen, z is going to equal 1, and we've got our n equals 1 to level n equals 2. Well, since none of these other things are changing besides the n, we can rewrite this equation to say that the change in energy is equal to negative 2.178 times 10 and the negative 18 
times the quantity z squared over n, we'll call it final, minus z squared over n initial. And our z is the same in both cases. So delta e equals negative 2.178 times 10 and the negative 18 joules times quantity 1 squared over 2 squared minus 1 squared over 1 squared. And so if we plug all that in, we end up with, and I've already done the math for you, 1.216 times, oh, whoops, no, meaning the wrong thing, uh, 1.633 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So that's the amount of energy to excite the, the hydrogen electron. Now let's compare that to finding the wavelength. So the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by that change in energy. And so Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Take that times our speed of light, which is 2.9979, whoops, not 8, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then we're going to divide that by our change in energy. So our 1.633 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And that gives us 1.216 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So that's our wavelength of energy emitted when it jumps from level 1 to level 2. So let's look at a little bit more information. So this model correctly fits the quantized energy level of the hydrogen atom. And it postulates, you know, and predicts that only certain allowed circular orbits for the electron. And so the electron is basically orbiting in these very specific orbits or paths. So as the electron is brought closer to the nucleus, energy is released from the system. It gains energy to move away from the nucleus. As it gets closer, it releases that energy. And so here's that equation that we just used in the previous problem. And so we can use this to calculate the energy to change between any two energy levels in a hydrogen atom. And so that's what we did in the last example. So let's look at another example. When I calculate the energy required to remove the electron from a hydrogen atom in its ground state. Well, ground state is going to be considered n equals 1. And if we're trying to remove the electron, we don't really know where we're going with it. So we're going to say n final is equal to infinity. So if we're trying to find our delta E, that's our negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times the quantity. Now because it's hydrogen, we know that Z is equal to 1. So 1 over N final squared minus 1 over N initial squared. And if we plug in our numbers, write this big long number, 1 over infinity minus 1 over 1, 1 squared is 1. Well, if we have this really big number on the bottom, and we take 1 divided by a really big number, that gets us a very, very tiny number. And so we're going to say that 1 over infinity is going to approach 0. And so this actually gives us negative 2.178 times 10 to negative 18 times the quantity 1 over 0 minus 1. And so that gives us basically 1 over 0 gives us 0. And so negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 times negative 1 is just positive 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay, well the only problem with Bohr's model was that it was found that it only worked for hydrogen. When it, we tried to apply it to other elements, it didn't predict, you know, correct results. It is important historically because it did help us, you know, with this quantized energy level and finding the amount of energy to jump orbitals and things like that. And it also showed that observed quantization of energy in atoms can be explained by making these simple assumptions that, you know, it jumps these energy levels and that they're very specific levels. The current model of the atom is not derived from Bohr's model, okay, but it is historically important. Hello, so we are going to go over the check for understanding questions for the second section of the Bohr model. So number one, what's the difference between emission and continuous spectrum and provide an example of each. Number two, what does it mean to say that energy is quantized? 
How does this relate to the atom and what scientists helped develop this concept? Number three, what is the relationship between the amount of energy and the electron's distance from the nucleus? And then the last question, what was the problem with Bohr's model and why is it still taught today? All right, we'll discuss these in class. Have a good day.